guys hear me okay? Amen. Greetings in the name of the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm grateful to God this morning. Um, grateful to God this morning. Yeah. We're not going to be long. We're not going to be long at all. ready for the word today? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Giving on to God, to our pastor in his absence. Uh, man. <laughs> Why y'all do me like that, man? You know, when uh, <clears throat> when family supports you, some of my time. Amen. Well, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> and uh, we're going to pray and we're going to get right in the word. We're going to pray and get right in the word. Uh, there is a word from the Lord. Um, the reason why I know is because the Lord wouldn't let me sleep. from the Lord. Father, we do thank you and we bless you. We honor you today, Father. We thank you for this time of fellowship around your words, your dear people you love and died and given yourself for. God, I declare I'm anointed to teach your word at this hour with a heart of love and compassion for your people. God, we declare your word goes forth unchecked, unhindered by any force, any demonic spirit. We bind the activity of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. Any distractions and hindrance that will try to keep us from hearing and receiving and acting upon your word. We bind it now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I ask that you breathe afresh on your word today, God. God, in such a manner that every spiritual need and desire is met, God. Every yoke is destroyed. Every burden is removed today, God. God, I decrease that your spirit might increase, God. Speak through me. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Dwell on the inside of me to carry your purpose, your plan, your will in the earth realm today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1, and the uh, pastor started this last week. I know he said it was just, just one, one week, uh, but uh, apparently we need to hear something else again. Uh, James chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 2. We're not going to read the whole text that the pastor did. We're just going to start at verse 2, verse 4, and then I have another text we're going to go to. James chapter 1. Verse 2, it says, My brethren, <clears throat> count it all joy when you fall into various trials, yes, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Yes, sir. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Hold that, and we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verse 6, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. When you get it, say, I have it. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And it says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people had spoke of stoning him because, his soul, because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughter. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. 
Then David said to Abathar, the priest, Amalek's son, please bring the, eph the ephod to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Amen. And verse 9 says, verse three, first, verse three, first three words of verse 9 says, So David went. One more text, and I'm going to tell you what we're talking about. 1 Samuel chapter 27. Go back two more, three more chapters. 1 Samuel chapter 27, verse 1 and 2. It says, And David said in his heart, Now I shall perish someday by the hand of Saul. There's nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape the land of the Philistine. And Saul would, will despair me and seek, to, and seek me any more, any parts of Israel. So I escaped out of his hands. And we'll stop right there. So we want to talk about today how to bounce back from failure. How do I bounce back from failure? How, how, how do I bounce back from failure? I failed, now what? <laughs> Amen. I failed, now what? You may be seated. And so we looked at last week, we started out last week in, in James chapter 1. We looked at how we're going to face trials. But we talked about facing trials with a winning attitude. Yes, if you're going to if you're going to overcome, if you're going to face trials, you're going to overcome. You have to face trials with a winning attitude. If you're going to win, you have to have the right attitude to win. Yes, sir. And so we looked at in James. James taught us two valuable lessons in James chapter one. The first thing he taught us is that in this world you're going to have problems. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's no if and buts about it. In this world. You're going to face changes, challenges. You're going to face problems. You're going to face issues. In fact, the Bible says that, that a man is born or a woman is but a few days, and those days are full of trouble. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so in this, in, this, in this world, you're going to have problems. There's no way around it. You're going to have challenges. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're going to face problems, and it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It doesn't matter how much time you pay. It doesn't matter how, how, long, if you, how long you stand at this altar. You're going to have problems. I don't care if you come up here and get a quick all down every week, you're going to have problems. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't care, I don't care if you lead praise and worship. You could be the best praise and worship leader on this side of heaven. you still going to have problems. Yes, sir. Amen. And so James teaches us we're going to have problems. In fact, in fact, he starts off his text. He says, my brethren, count it all joy yes, when you fall. He didn't say if you were going to fall. He said, count it all joy when you fall. Yes, sir. So it's only a matter of time before you face your problems. Yes, sir. Come on. <laughs> they, they coming. You may be good today, but keep living. Keep waking up every day. They coming. Amen. You know, my father used to tell me all the time, you know, we hear pastors say it too all the time, you know, you, you, you in three places in life. Either you're just coming out of a storm, you're on your way into a storm, or, or, or you, 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 you've been through a storm. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So you, you're going to face problems in your life. Yeah. This is a part of life. In fact, in John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me, in, the, in me you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. Yes, sir. He said, in, in this world, because we're in this world, we're going to face problems. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. In fact, this is one of my favorite scriptures, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange when you follow the various trials as though some strange thing has happened to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> it says, think it not strange when you fall into various trials as though some strange thing is. Like it ain't nothing wrong with you because you're facing trials. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Amen. Look, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because you're going to face problems. Yes, you're going to face situations. But the key is, as, jo as James tells us, we have to count it out joy. Yeah. We have to have the right attitude when you're facing your problems. Yeah. Amen. John 16, 33, Jesus says, be of good cheer. Yes, sir. He says, because I have overcome the world. And so right. if you're going to overcome the world, the Bible says you have to have the right attitude. Right. 
<laughs> Amen. Now watch this. Watch this. Many of us, when we face problems, we tend to want to run away or to avoid the issue. Most of the time when you face a problem or issue, you tend to want to avoid it. But there's some issues, there's some problems you face in life that you just going to have to face. Yes, sir. There's some issues that you face, some challenges that you face in life, you are going to have to face head on. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's just like, you know, you get on a plane, you go on, on a flight, you get on a flight. There's some turbulence that you just going to have to go through. Yes, sir. In fact, you'll hear the captain come over to the loudspeaker and say, Place your tray table in an upright position. Let put your seat belt, put your seat belt on. Make sure you're strapped in because we're about to enter some turbulence. Uh -huh. In life, there's some turbulence that you're just gonna have to go through. Yes, there's some things you're just gonna have to ride out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In fact, Jesus said when he, when he was when he was in the in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass. Yes. Jesus didn't want to go through the, yes. through, the, through the issue, but he says, Now, nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. There's some things that you gonna that you want to avoid, God needs you to go through. Right. <laughs> Amen. There's some changes, some challenges you have in your life that you tend to avoid, but God intends for you to go through. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Why is that important? Why is it important? The things that you have to go through, because watch this, the world looks at the challenges that you face and oftentimes judge you by the, fact, by the challenges that you face, by the issues that you face. And you know, we, sometimes we go through challenges and we fail. Let me give you a definition of fail, what, what failure means. Failure means Failure is, is an unsuccessful attempt to accomplish a goal. It's just that simple. It's an unsuccessful attempt to achieve or accomplish a goal. It's, it's called failure. Now watch this. There's nothing wrong with failing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Contrary to what you, what you may have heard, yes, sir. there's nothing wrong with failure. Amen. Why the amen corner went way down. There's nothing wrong with failing. Watch this. Why is that important? Because oftentimes God uses your failure. He, God uses your failure to get you what you need to succeed. <laughs> oftentimes God uses the very thing that you failed in to get you what you need to succeed. That's why in James he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tests. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. And at the end of patience, the Bible says, you'll be complete, lacking nothing. So in order, for you, in order for you to get to the place of completion, lacking nothing, you have to go through that failure part. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, oftentimes... Oftentimes, you know, we look at our life and we want to get to the blessed, the blessed place. We want to get to this blessed, this place of abundance, this blessed place so fast. And that's not how God works. Yes, sir. We want God to, we want to snap our finger and God is, is, then drop it in your lap. But many times as the enemy, you know, I like to look at it this way. The enemy like to play checkers, but God is playing chess. God is already thinking three steps ahead. He's already thinking ahead of where you're going. Everything that you go through in life, God has a purpose for it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. You know, we want everything to happen, happen, happen. But everything that you, when, when you, the things that you face, God is training you. He's proving you. He's growing you. He's maturing you through the things that you go through. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at something in, in 1 Samuel chapter 13. David shows us how you bounce back for faith. Because the worst thing you can do is fail and quit. Talk, talk, man. <laughs> talk. Amen. Amen. If, imagine, imagine the inventor who invented the light bulb. You think he invented it on the first try? He, he tried countless numbers of times. But watch this. You'll never, you, you'll never remember the failures once you have the success. You forget about the failures once you get to the place of success. Yes, sir. 
So as certain things, God, you know, watch this. If you look at the example of a woman having a baby, she goes through nine months of pain. But once she has the baby, she forget about all the pain she just went through. Amen. And so let's look at how we can bounce back for fit, because it's a part of life. So we don't want you to stay where you are. We want you to be able to bounce back from failure. And the good news is God wants you to bounce back. Yes, sir. God wants you to succeed. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Now, how do I bounce back from failure? Look at 1 Samuel chapter 30. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, we see how we find David at a place of failure. He came back home from Ziglag, came back to Ziglag, and the enemy had then took his family, had then took his children, had then destroyed his town, his city, and he was in a place of failure. The Bible says he, he was discouraged. The people who were looking at the, his friends, all the people that he grew up with, were looking to kill him. So he, he, was, he was experiencing failure. And, and many of us, we like to look at David, and all we, all we think about David is that, you know, he killed Goliath. He killed, he killed, you know, the lion and the bear. We look at David. He, you know, the Bible says he's a, he's a man after God's own heart. And that's, that's what we look at today. We always see the success stories of David. But nobody actually look at this part where David failed. <laughs> Amen. And watch this. As I stated before, just because you saved, just because you walk closer with God, doesn't exempt you from failure. In the story, it's ta- in, in the Bible, it, talks, it has a story about when Jesus fed 5,000. He fed the 5,000. The disciples were with him every day. And he told them, he said, now, sit the people down and give them something to eat. They had, he had just taught them about faith. Yeah. He had just taught them how to walk by faith. And they failed the test. The Bible said he, he told them to do it because he, he tested them to see what they would do. <laughs> and the first thing they did is say, Lord, I don't know how we're going to feed these people. We ain't got enough money. He didn't ask him how he was going to do it. He just told him to sit them down and do it. Oftentimes, when God tells us to do something, that we gotta, we, God has us on a need-to-know basis. Right. Right. When you need to know, he'll tell you. Uh-huh. Amen. God is the only person that we as believers feel like we got to have full discretion of what needs to be done. All right. Amen. You can, go, you can go get a job. You can go apply for a job. You can go on an interview, they tell you they're going to pay $100,000 a year. You leave that job, you're excited about that $100,000 a year. Not one time did you check their bank account and see if they even have the money. Right. Oh. Amen. No, not one time did you, did, did you do a credit check to see, you know, if their credit is good or, or they're capable to do what they say they was going to do. All, you, all they tell you, we're going to pay you $100,000 and you believe them. Why is it when God tells us something in the word, we, we need God to show us a sign? Why can't we just take God for his word? Why do we need God to show us a sign for us to believe what he says in his word? <laughs> amen. I know I ain't getting a lot of amen. I know. That's okay. That's all right. I'm, good. I'm cool with it. Amen. I amen my own self. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, When we look at this, this story of David, the reality is, no matter who you are, and I'm, I'm going to keep saying this, I need you to really understand this, no matter who you are, you're going to experience failure. No matter who you are, no matter what stage you are in life, you're going to experience failure. Now. In my life, I'm going to talk about me. In my life, a lot of people don't know this about me, but in my life, I had a dark, dark, dark time in my life. I mean, I went through a dark season of my life. I had just come out of divorce, didn't have my children, just lost my mother, You know, I was in a dark, dark, dark place in my life. Was living from pillar to post. (laughs) 
Amen. We were at our, our old church at Wright Grove. And uh, a lot of people don't know this. I actually lived at the church. Amen. Pastor didn't know until one day he, he just happened to show up and I was there. How many know that looked like failure? Amen. Amen. I would wait till everybody leave, go get in my car, drive down the street, make the circle, come back to the church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But God used that season in my life yeah. to develop me for who I am now. Because it's times in your life where you can't, you can't trust and depend nobody but God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's times you can't even pick up the phone to call nobody to help. Everybody you know that would normally help you not, are now not in a position to help. Yes, sir. Amen. And so... In this text, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, we're looking at David. He's right there in this place. He's right there in this place. And how did David get to this place? How did David get to this place of discouragement and failure? How, how did he get there? And many of us go going to find ourselves right here with David. Because I found myself right here. How did David get there? Remember, I had you read 1 Samuel chapter 27. David said, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 27, it says, And David said in his heart, Now I shall perish someday by the hands of Saul. David literally spoke into existence what he was experiencing in chapter 30. Amen. Oftentimes, we find ourselves at a place of failure because of what's coming out of your mouth. David found himself in a place of failure because he literally said, now I perish someday by the hands of Saul. He got there because David was tired. This is where I know a lot of us, how I know that? Because the Spirit of God told me. This is where I know a lot of people are right now in this building. You're at a place or you're at a position or a place where you're tired. You're tired. You're at a place where you feel like you want to give up. You've gone through so much that you're tired. Amen. What was David tired? David was tired of running from Saul. He was tired of ducking Saul. Every time Saul was looking, he was, Saul was trying to kill. He was tired of ducking Saul. He was tired of not experiencing the promises God said he was going to have. God told him he was going to be king long ago. And he, he was not king. He was, tired of, he was tired of waiting on the promises of God. And so he, what he said, he said, listen, I'm, I'm just going you know, to go somewhere and you know, Saul's going to kill me. He was giving up. And a lot of us are in the place we're tired of waiting on God to, to give us what we need. We're tired of waiting on God to restore our family. We're tired of waiting on God to give us the financial blessing that he said he's going to. We're tired of waiting on God to restore your relationship. You're tired of waiting on God to give you that husband that you've been praying about. You're tired of waiting on God to give you that wife. You're tired. <laughs> Amen. And what David did, David became impatient. Amen. That's why in James, God says, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. Because you're going to need patience to get to where God wants you to be. You're going to need patience to be able to bounce back from failure. You're going to need patience. God, the Bible says, after you have done the will of God, you have need of patience. Amen. Patience is necessary for you to get to where God wants you to be. And David was in to the place where he has, he has lost, he was impatient. And when you tire and you get exhausted, you become impatient. And when you become impatient, guess what you start doing? You start creating your own way of going. 
Amen. You start, you start coming up with your own plan of action. Mr. Evans told us in, 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 in the first service, he said, there's a way that seems right, but the end is a way of destruction. And so you start coming up with your own way that seems right because you're tired of waiting on God. <laughs> Amen. He became impatient. And when you become impatient, this is one, some of the things you tend to do. Number one, when you become impatient, the first thing you do, you disconnect from God. In 1 Samuel chapter 26, that's what David did. He disconnected from God. And a lot of us, when we become impatient, when we come impatient on, on waiting on the promises of God, you become impatient, you begin to move without God, you disconnect from God. Amen. You begin to disconnect from, you, have you ever noticed when you're going through problems, the first thing you do is stop coming to church? Amen. And that's the last place you should stop coming. The first place you, first, you don't stop going to work. You don't stop going to the beautician. You don't stop going to the nail shop. Not stop going to the barber. But when you're going through a problem, the first place you stop coming is church. You are disconnecting from God. Amen. You go to work with your problems. You go to work every day early. But when you have having issues, you drag in the church, you come late, you know, you don't want to participate, you sit down, you got wind in your jaws, you know, you mad, huffing and puffing. God ain't did you nothing. But you come and take it out on God when you, when you upset. Right. Amen. I'm going I'm to look right on down here. I ain't looking at nobody, you know, and say amen or ouch. Amen. Number one, you disconnect from God. Secondly, what you do you begin to deviate from God's plan yes, sir. by creating your own plan to go for, to follow. That's what David did in, 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 in chapter 20, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 27. David deviated from God's plan. He says, you know, listen, God, you know, I know you, you got a plan, but listen, I'm going to do my own thing now. In chapter 27, he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. You know, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go over here and, you know, Saul, if Saul killed me, he killed me. I'm just, but I'm going to do my own thing. And a lot of times, that's what we do. We begin to disconnect from God. We disconnect from God. We deviate from God's plan. And then lastly, we connect with the wrong people. Yeah. You disconnect from God, you deviate from God's plan, and then you, f you find other disgruntled people to connect with. <laughs> Amen. You begin to connect with others disgruntled. You mad about something, you find somebody else that's mad about the same thing you mad about, and y'all now y'all got a little huddle over there, and y'all gossiping about somebody else that you mad about. Amen. You begin to disconnect from God, and you connect with the wrong people. Yeah. You know, uh, I heard, a, I heard a, a, a minister say this once. You need to get away from people that got your problem and get around people with your answer. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And when you disconnect from God, what you tend to do is connect with everybody with the same problem you have. Yeah. And how can they help you if they got the same problem? <laughs> Amen. All right, I'm going I'm to I'm speed on. I'm going to press on. I'm going to speed on. I see my, my time keeper finna pull my coat. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to speed on. Now, how do, how, do you, how do you bounce back from failure? How do you bounce back from failure? Number one, you have to remember some things. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, the Bible says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. And if you're going to bounce back from failure, you have to encourage yourself or strengthen yourself in the Lord. Meaning, you have to start remembering some things that God has done for you. Yes. Yes. Amen. You have to start replaying in your head, God has brought me through this. He's brought me through that. He's brought me through this. And you start replaying it. If God did it for me here, he can do it again. So you have to start remembering some things. 
You have to remember, you have to remember, the Bible says you have to bring some things back to your remembrance. Amen. In fact, in Lamentation, it says, I have to call things back to my remembrance, therefore I have hope. When you start remembering the things God has done for you, now you have some hope. <laughs> Amen. You have to remember how much God loves you. You have to remember God's promises for your life. You have to remember God's past deliverance. You have to start remembering some things. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as you remember those things, you have to change your confession. Because remember, David's confession is what got him where he is. You have to change your confession. Second thing you have to do, you have to make a request. The Bible says in verse 8, it says, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue or shall I overtake them? Now watch this. In, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 27 through 30, David, David never asked God anything. He never even mentioned God. For three chapters, he never even mentioned God. But in chapter 30, he understands, listen, wait a minute. I need to start back talking to God. I need to get back in line with God. And so you have to get in the, you have to remind yourself, listen, I have to start talking to the one who got me where I was. I have to get back to the one who, 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 you know, you ask God, God bless you with something, and you got to get back to the one who gave you the blessing. The Bible says you have to return back to your first love. <laughs> Amen. Thirdly, you have, to, you, have to, you have to request wisdom. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. thirdly, you have, you have to request wisdom from God. You have to request wisdom. That's what he says. He inquired from the Lord. He requests wisdom from God. You have to acknowledge God. The Bible says in, 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 uh, in uh, verse 7, he says, he says, please bring the ephod to me, meaning bring back God's presence in my life. Yes. You have to get back into God's presence. Yes. You, have to, you have to get back into God's presence. You have to get back into God's presence. The Bible says in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. In his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. You have to get back in the presence of God. In the presence of God, anything that's not like him has to get like him. In the presence of God, anything that's not like him has to line up with him. And so you have to get back in the presence of God. <laughs> Amen. For you have to remain till you get a response. You have to remain in God's presence until you get a response. And then finally, you have to relocate. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have to get from where you are. Get off where get from where you are and get to the place God wants you to be. You have to, and when I say re relocate, I mean you have to move immediately. When God tells you to do something, you have to move immediately. Don't wait to, you know, well, you know, like we had this thing, well, I'm, I'm going I'm to wait till things get better. No, they're not going to get better until you move. So you have to move immediately. And when you move immediately, God will change your situation. In fact, remember, remember, uh, remember the, 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 the guy who, who, who was waiting to get in the pool? He, he just, you know, he, he was sitting there. He was just sitting there. And God said, no, you go get in the pool. He said, I, I won't. He, first thing he want to do is give me an excuse. I have nobody to put me in there. God said, you don't need nobody. You go get in there yourself. And so a lot of us are waiting for other people to do what God has told you to do. Stop waiting for people to do what God has already told you to do. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to close with this. God intends for you and I to overcome every situation, every circumstance, every condition. God's intent for you and I to be victorious. The Bible says God always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to win. Even when it looks like we shouldn't win, God says he always causes us to win. Amen. And so no matter what you face in life, no matter what failure you've gone through, the Bible says at the end of the day, God always causes you to win. So and like Ms. Elvis used the example about being in the dark. Even if you got to feel down the wall in the dark, you got to get to the place where God wants you to be. He always causes you to win. Amen. Stand to your feet all over the building. God wants you and I to win. God wants you and I to bounce back from every situation, every circumstance, 
every condition. Amen. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, allow me to, re to reintroduce myself. You may have been in a place of failure. You may have been in a place of defeat. You may have been in a place of discouragement. But today, God wants you to know that you are a winner. God wants you to know that you are a champion. God wants you to know he created you to win. God wants you to know that you are victorious in every situation, regardless of what it looked like. Don't be moved by what you see. Be moved by what you believe. Amen. Don't be moved by what the enemy is showing you. Be moved by what the word of God says. Amen. And so if that's you today, if that's you today, and you said, listen, I want to I get to this place in life where God, where God wants me to be. I want to get to this place in life where God intends for me to be. I want to get to this place in life where I'm healed, where I'm delivered, where I'm set free. I want to get to this place in life where God, God's word says I'm supposed to be. If that's you, my brother, my sister, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, slip your hand up in the air so we can see you, most of all, so God can see you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, raise your hand up in the air. We want to make sure that you, that you get to the place where God wants you to be. Father, we thank you for thousands, God. We thank you, God, that you're saving those. God, thank you for those who are here, God, whose hands did not go up and should have, God. We thank you, God. We pray. God, for your word. We pray that your word is so on good ground. We bless you today, God. We honor you today, God. We magnify your name today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray you were blessed by that word today. I pray you were blessed by that word today. Listen, God wants you to win. God wants you to win. God wants you to to win. I need you to hear me clear. God wants you to win. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. It's offering time. Offering time. Amen. I'm here to actually uh, explain to you how we do our contributions, how we go about our giving. Uh, definitely. I'm excited. I mean, how many were blessed by that word on today? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Thank you. I see we have some, some new faces and some more visitors that came in. Raise your hands if you're for sure, first time visiting. I just want to acknowledge again. Amen. 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 We got you. Amen. 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 First of all, we want to thank you once again uh, for being a part of our service. I truly believe that you were blessed on today and God has met every need and exceeded your need and your expectation. Uh, I also want to acknowledge if you have not received the connect card, please just simply raise your hand and we want to get one to you because we want to stay in touch with you and be, uh, be able to allow ourselves to be able to stay connected with you and give you some information on what we're doing in the upcoming days. And we definitely appreciate you being a part of our service on today once again. And after you filled out that information, please submit that information back into our uh, baskets as they come around today. Amen. So let us get ready for our offering time. Amen. Give God one more hand clap of praise. I'm going to show you how we distribute our giving. We have several ways uh, that we distribute our giving in here. So I want to acknowledge those. First, let's not forget that we do have our man of God. We want to make sure that we continue to take care of our man of God. Yes, he's absent, but he needs a vacation. Amen. He needs a time of fellowship and rest for himself to be able to recalibrate and get back into doing it. Amen. There are several ways that we get distribute our giving and go about our contributions. First, we have our text to give. You can text NJC to 866-863-863. 2530 and you'll be able to distribute your contributions through here also we have you can give via zale you can uh, zale it to 832-592-0668 thirdly we also have uh via cash app if you do not have cash app you can simply download this to your mobile device you can find us by locating dollar sign new journey bc and you can distribute your uh, contributions via uh, cash app 
And lastly, we have uh, the conventional way. If you do not have an envelope, just simply just uh, slip your hand in the air, and somebody can get you an envelope as quickly as possible. And you can make all checks payable to New Journey North Campus. Amen. So if you need an envelope, just simply raise your hand. We'll get one as quickly as possible. And I'm gonna give you a few minutes uh, just to uh, fill out your envelopes, and then from there, I'm gonna leave, give it over to our hands of our ushers. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you for the gifts and the givers, God. Thank you for those that had the opportunity to give, Father, right now. And God, we thank you that you continue, Father, to bless those who did not. And God, we thank you, Father, right now for every need being met with heaven's best. In the mighty name of Jesus, as they all said, amen. Come on, now, let's everybody stand. Amen, amen. Everybody can stand. Amen. Dylan, give me a little bit more volume. Amen, amen. You can say it. Amen, amen, amen. First of all, once, once again, I want to thank everybody uh, for being a part of our 11 a.m. This is why I want to preach first, because I know uh, Minister Williams, he's going to slow cook you, boy, and he's going to definitely bring that word with power. So that's why I always like to go first. I'm not going to go behind him like that. That's just not going to happen. Amen.